Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're actually gonna do some cooking. I know my channel's all over the place. We're doing games, we're doing makeup, and now we're cooking. But you know, I do really enjoy cooking, so I figured, you know what, why not come on here and just cook something random. So that is what we're gonna do today. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this giant pork loin here, um, and we're gonna cook it in the crock pot. Now this is not something I've ever done before. I do like to experiment and try different recipes that I just find online. Uh, there's a pork chop and like a white wine reduction sauce that I love making, um, and I found that online. So this is just another recipe. It's a simple, quick one, just a couple ingredients, um, and it looks pretty easy. So that is what we're gonna do today. Also, before we get started, I want to apologize in advance if you hear the bird. She is in the room next door. I can't really muffle her sound as well as my audio may not be the best. It's probably really echoey in here, but I will try to still make this video entertaining. Okay, so the first step of this recipe says to take the roast out of the fridge and let it sit for 20 minutes unwrapped. So I've had it unwrapped. I just kind of put it in this bowl so I'd have somewhere to sit. And it's been a little probably over 20 minutes. I don't think it really matters time frame wise. It's probably just to get it closer to room temperature than having it in the fridge. So that is done. The second step is taking a small bowl and combining salt, pepper, garlic powder. So it has measurements on here. I think a teaspoon or half a teaspoon of each. I'm just gonna kind of guess. So we're gonna take our pepper. Um, I don't really think it matters what kind of pepper and salt you use. Um, do whatever your preference is. Uh, we're just gonna take this black peppercorn and we are just gonna fill this. It's a pretty big pork loin, so even if I did a teaspoon, I don't know if that'd be enough. So I'm just gonna kind of, you know, wing it. Yeah, I don't know if that's a teaspoon worth, um, but we're just gonna go with it. Next, we're just gonna put the salt in there, which is another teaspoon of salt is what it wants. I like how salt is so much easier to grind. Okay, so the last ingredient we want is half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Um, we're just gonna put that much. I guess that's pretty good. Okay, so once you have your uh, measured or unmeasured ingredients, you're just supposed to mix it up. So I'm just gonna shake the bowl and that's mixed up. All right, so the next step is to uh, rub the pork with a teaspoon of olive oil. Uh, I don't think a teaspoon is going to be enough for this thing. Like, it's honestly massive. So I'm just going to kind of, you know, pour it on there on each side. Um, and then we're supposed to rub it in. I normally don't like touching meats and stuff when I cook. Like, it's just not, not my thing. I find it quite nasty, to be honest. Um, but, you know, we're going to do it. The recipe calls for it, and it makes good YouTube content to be, you know rubbing raw meat. All right, we're supposed to do both sides, so I'm gonna flip this freaking hunk of meat over and do the fatty side. Okay, so now that the dry rub of ingredients and the olive oil is rubbed on here, we need to saute it, and we're actually gonna use the Instant Pot to do that, so we're just gonna click saute, and we're gonna let it start and heat up. Uh, well, I can definitely hear it uh, doing something, so it's definitely getting hot. Uh, so once it gets hot, basically, we put this in there and we're supposed to sear it on all sides for four minutes uh, with putting in more olive oil. So once it actually says hot, apparently, on the display, I guess, I don't know, I've never used this before, that's when we're supposed to put it in. So as soon as it says hot and not on, we'll start cooking this. It doesn't say hot yet, and it's been a couple minutes, um, I can definitely feel it warm, so I don't know if that actually says hot or if it just stays on on. I'll give it a couple more minutes. If it doesn't change, we're just gonna put the damn thing in there and go with it. Oh, actually, it just said hot right now. Okay, so what we're supposed to do is put this on and sear it on each side. So I need to open up the olive oil. My hand is out of commission, so we're gonna use the armpit. So put this in here. I don't know, that should be enough. And we're gonna sear this for four minutes on each side. And we'll start with the fatty side. I don't even know if like the whole side is gonna sit on that. Woo! Okay, I'm gonna watch 
wash my hands now. It smells really good so far. Uh, we just gotta wait for four minutes to pass and then we will flip it over to the other side and let it saute. All right, I had to open the window because this is getting pretty steamy and it doesn't say to like put the lid on when you're sauteing it. So I'm just gonna leave the lid off and we'll put the lid on when we actually uh, do whatever other cooking it wants us to do. All right, it's been four minutes, so we're gonna take it out. I'm not gonna stick my hand in there and grab it because, you know, let's not try and burn ourselves. Um, see if I can get this to work. Just gonna lift it. Or not. Maybe we'll just flip it over. Ooh! Ooh, that is a good sear, though. That is a good sear. Oh my god! Help! Help! It's stuck! Help! Okay. Alright. Woo! Right up, flipped over. Another four minutes. <laughs> Alright, we are almost ready to pull this out. It says to sear it on all sides, but I'm not going to sit here and hold it. Um, if it's going to actually, like, cook, cook in there uh, with, like, the roast setting or whatever, I'm pretty sure just doing the top and the bottom, like, the major parts of it is going to be fine. So we're gonna take it out once it's done. Oh, it honestly smells really good though. For just using like salt, pepper, and garlic powder, like it smells really good. I could have gone like super fancy with it, you know, but uh, we don't have a lot of ingredients. Okay, so uh, time is up. So we are gonna flip this bad boy over again so it's easier to grab. Urgh. good thing I don't have hair because honestly with all this steam it would have been like the most ratchet hairdo in a video you've probably ever seen in your life. Help! I'm gonna have to use a spoon. Help! Ugh. Oh, hold on. Let me move the plate. Over. So basically what you're supposed to do is take it out. Ugh. Look at this delicious I'm gonna hold it so it doesn't fall off. Look at this delicious monster. I could probably sear this side right here to get rid of that paint, but I think once it's actually on roast, we'll be fine. So what it says to do next, I think I'm just gonna shut it off. Basically, it says that once it's done cooking, you take it out, you take a cup of either chicken broth or water. I'm using chicken broth because I want the flavor. Basically, you pour it in the bottom, and then you take a wooden spoon. Oh, that's quiet. You take a wooden spoon and scrape off the bright, like the burnt bits on the bottom, because otherwise uh, the system apparently senses that it's hot and may shut off. So it wants you to scrape all the bits off. And honestly, I guess you keep them in here for flavor. So we're gonna scrape all the bits off the bottom. All right. Hmm. Honestly, this gravy alone is smelling pretty good too. Or this, the broth and the pork. The broth and the burnt pork bits. All right, so once that is done, you're supposed to take the trivet, uh, this little thing, place it in the bottom. Boop, done. I mean, a cup didn't seem like a lot. There's not a lot in there. Like the pork is not going to be sitting in the sauce, but I guess it doesn't matter. It's going to steam cook. I, I'm not quite sure. Um, I may actually go in and just have a little bit more chicken broth. You know, why not change the recipe? If you think something looks wrong or you don't like the way it looks, change the recipe. It's not set in stone. You can do whatever you want. Uh, so now we are gonna take this hunk of bunk of bad boy back, and push it back in here. Get your fat ass in the crock pot. Oh, I actually 
actually just did that really good. Wow. Okay. So uh, basically now what you're going to do is I don't really need a spoon, but whatever. We're going to keep it. Uh, you're going to take the lid of the crock pot, put it, put it on, turn it. It makes that little noise, I guess. That means it's sealed. Um, you're going to take the top apparently and put it on sealing versus venting. I don't know if this little knob thing works on here. This is my mom's crock pot that she gave me, so it may be broken. I don't know if it's actually gonna cook properly, uh, but I put it on the, I don't know. I put it on the ceiling setting, so hopefully that does, you know, what it's, what it's supposed to do. Um, and then you're just gonna turn it on meat stew. So we're gonna do that. And it says cook it for 17 minutes. Um, and then once it's finished, allow the pot to sit for 10 minutes, then do a quick release by moving it to the venting thing, uh, which I honestly don't know if it's even going to work. We'll actually find out once it starts letting steam out or not letting steam out. Um, and then basically you're going to remove the pork loin, put it on a cutting board, remove the trivet on the bottom, select saute, boil the juices, Um, and then you just use the juices apparently as like a sauce. So, uh, I will see you guys in 17 long minutes. The Krusty Kray, yeah, 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 pizza is the pizza for you and me. Hello, it's me. I was wondering why this takes so long to cook some meat. I am hungry. <sighs> Bitch, please stop interrupting me. You sound like my tummy. Bitch, I'm getting thirsty. Now, I suck at opening wine, so no judging me, but I'm thirsty, and I ain't waiting all day. Oh, wait, that's the wrong way. No, wait, that was the right way. I'm dumb. Ugh, see, I already suck at opening this. So we're just gonna go all the way down to the lower. Oof. Okay, please don't screw up. No, I literally suck at opening wine, and it, like, really pisses me off. And I'm honestly not much of a drinker either, but this wine is pretty good. And I know you guys are going to be like, wow, that's like basic bitch juice. Which it kind of is. It's not like super alcoholy tasting, which is perfect for me. Eh, it's stuck. No. Hold on. We can do this. I believe in the heart of the cards, damn it. Please help. Oh my God, it's already breaking. Just like my soul and my heart. Please, please Lord. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry, damn it. I literally just broke a piece off the bottle. <laughs> uh, how do you break the bottle without getting the damn cork out? What is this? Uh, mm. oh, come on, please. Just get out of there. Get out. Damn it. Hold on. We're just gonna like yank it out, hopefully. <clears throat> nope. So it takes 17 minutes. Oh wait, hold on. <gasps> yes! I did it! This is the first time I've ever opened one without breaking the cork, even though it's all deformed. I did it. I just broke the bottle instead. <laughs> Throw that away. Okay. Let's just 
before this. Get some drink. Okay, so the 17 minutes is done. It does say to, uh, when the cooking has finished, to allow the pot to sit for 10 minutes and then release the steam. Um, so we're gonna let it sit for another 10 minutes, dear Lord, and once it's done, we'll release it, we'll pull it out, we'll let it rest for a minute while we cook the sauces in there for like five to seven minutes and kind of let that go, and then we're golden. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes. We're gonna release the steam, which looks like it's coming out. It's not super crazy, so I don't know. And then we're gonna, um... Ooh, oh, there's water. There's water, girl. Ooh. She wet. Girl, she wet. Mmm, that smells really good. So I have my cutting board here to set it on. Have my knife, you know. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so we're gonna pull it out. Oh goodness. And we're gonna let the meat sit and rest. Okay, so we're gonna take the pork loin out, put it on the cutting board, let it rest. Uh, once we do that, we take the little trivet, trivet, whatever thing that the pork was sitting on out, um, and we let the sauces saute for another like five to seven minutes and that turns into like a sauce gravy thing, and then we're done. So uh, let's uh, grab this bad boy out here. Come on, come on, you smell so good. Oh, oh lordy. Oof. I mean, it looks cooked. That's all we can hope for, right? Oh, I honestly really hope that it's cooked all the way through, because if not, I'm gonna cry. All right. I mean, we let it cook for as long as it was supposed to. Granted, the recipe doesn't say like how big the loin is supposed to be, and this one's pretty big. Uh, but yeah, so we're gonna let this set on the side. Put all our tools down. Actually, I need these. We're gonna grab the little trivet out of here. Trivet, whatever the heck you wanna call it. Should I lick it? No, it's probably really hot. Ooh, ooh, ow, yeah, it's hot. Just kidding. Uh, we don't really need these anymore. So we're gonna set those in the sink. And now we need to put this on saute. So we'll put it on saute. I'm gonna stir it up a little bit. Um, I probably could put like flour in here a little bit, honestly, or cornstarch to make it like an actual thick kind of gravy, but we'll leave it as just like a sauce, like more of a liquid. And we will let it saute for five minutes. Okay, it's been give or take about five minutes. Honestly, this has been like pre-boiling. So I'm just gonna shut it off. Um, obviously it's still gonna be hot, so it's still gonna kind of saute in here. Um, but it has been, you know, close to five minutes, if not five minutes already. So we'll kind of let that go. Um, and then we're gonna cut the uh, little thing here. And it is leaking juice. Girl, she is juicy. Like she is just leaking juice all over the counter, which is fine, but damn girl, she's thick and juicy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna move it close. And uh, I'm just gonna use this to hold it basically. Let's move it a little bit more to the center of the cutting board. Thank you, thank you. And uh, let's cut it and keep our fingers crossed that it's actually cooked all the way through. Ooh. Well, I mean, yes, she's cooked all the way through. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I won't cut the whole thing. Um, I'm not gonna eat the whole thing <laughs> either. Um, I'll cut a couple pieces off. I honestly think that's probably good for now. If I'm hungry, I'll come back for seconds. Cause I mean, this belly wasn't built by just one serving of food. Uh, so we'll come back for seconds if we want. Um, also my roommate will definitely eat some. So we're gonna save this big uh, hunk of meat. Uh, we're gonna take these two pieces and let's get our plate ready. Okay, so we have our plate and we have our wine cause we thirsty. 
And uh, we have our Magnolia Home Spoon because ain't they the best. Um, and we're just gonna go right in. Obviously the potatoes are potatoes and the green beans are green beans. What we're here for and what we obviously cooked is the pork loin. So let's take a bite and see. Honestly, it's really good. Um, it's not necessarily as tender as I typically like my meats. Like when I get steak, I get it medium rare. When I cook chicken, it always tends to be juicy no matter what I do. This is a little bit on the drier side, but it's also pork and that's kind of how pork loin and pork chops tend to be. They're not necessarily always like the easiest meat to chew. So by that standard, it's not bad. Um, the minimalist flavoring that we put on there is really good. I'm also really happy that I chose to use chicken broth instead of water in there because I feel like with using water and not chicken broth, there wouldn't be as much flavor and it would kind of just be the flavoring of the meat itself versus like the actual dry rub ingredients and stuff that I put on there. So I'm not mad at that. Um, let's go in for a second bite here with a lot of the fat because ain't that the best part? Mm. Okay, the fat, honestly, you can just give me all of the fat off this and I'll give the meat to someone else because the fat is so freaking good. It's got so much of that like rub that we put in there as well as like a little bit of the olive oil, I can taste it. My palate's like very distinctive in terms of like I can taste specific ingredients and stuff in food. Um, which is kind of why I'm very like sensitive to a lot of things I think and a lot of ingredients I don't like aka cilantro don't at me um, But yeah, so I can taste a little bit of the olive oil in there mixed in with everything else. Honestly, it's really good I'd say 10 out of 10 just because I cooked it if someone else cooked it I may not give it a 10 out of 10 because it's still missing some flavor, but it's not bad um, I don't know exactly what I would add to that maybe like some fresh parsley or thyme or something like that throw it in there um, maybe saute it with like some carrots or something in there too i don't know just add something a little bit to give it a little like kick a little pop um, but other than that it's pretty good i'm gonna go eat my dinner because as you can see it's pretty late and i'm hungry um, i hope that you guys enjoyed this episode of i don't know what cooking i guess i don't i'll, I'll think of a funny title pun to put in the you know headline of the video but I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a like, leave a comment. If you guys uh, know any other good recipes of just random stuff you want me to cook, I may come back and cook stroganoff because I really like that. Um, but, you know, give me some ideas of other things you might want to see, cook, bake, whatever, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.